from WJZ 13, you've got Baltimore's favorite news team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, Governor Glenn Denning's teenage son is arrested for drunken driving. Good evening, I'm Ron Matz, and this is what people are talking about tonight. 19-year-old Raymond Glenn Denning was stopped at 2.30 this morning in Prince George's County. He failed several sobriety tests and was arrested. His car impounded. This is Raymond Glenn Denning several years ago with his parents. Prince George's County Police tell Eyewitness News they were responding to a burglar alarm in the 9,000 block of Baltimore Avenue when they saw a car in the parking lot. Raymond Glenn Denning got out, and police say he was acting erratically. Governor and Mrs. Glenn Denning released a statement today saying they received a call that every parent dreads that their son had been issued citations by the police for an alcohol-related driving offense. They say their first duty now must be as parents by offering Raymond love, guidance, and support. They finished by saying they will deal with the issue in a private manner. Raymond Glenn Denning was released on his own recognizance. Stick with Eyewitness News for the very latest on this breaking story. Well, she was the unofficial first lady of the Schaefer administration. Hilda Mae Snoops died Friday, and tonight she was remembered at her wake in Towson. Dennis Edwards joins us live with her exclusive story through the eyes of the man who called her a special friend for decades. Dennis. Ron, Hilda Mae Snoops and Donald Schaefer were together more than 41 years through city council, the mayor's office, and onto the governor's mansion and beyond. Hilda Mae was his constant companion, friend, and confidant. He was the love of her life, who stayed by her side till death took her away. The other day, when there was no one there except she and I, I think she made up her mind, it's time for me to go, and uh, she left. What I thought was nice. Donald Schaefer's sadness is eased by the joy that comes when a friend passes in peace. Donald and Hilda Mae Snoops were birds of a feather, so to speak. Two people who liked getting things done and helping as many as possible along the way. Hilda Mae got her a little baby cross, a little cross, and she said, gave it to her and said, everything will be all right for you. And, and it was. And she, tonight she brought the cross and she said, Hilda Mae gave me that when I was having some real difficulty. That woman came to the wake at Ruck's funeral home along with countless others. He listened to their stories and I think enjoyed every word. Donald says Hilda Mae's greatest accomplishment was in Annapolis when she supervised the remodeling of the governor's mansion. In the process, she helped some cooks understand what it meant to make real food. I said to her, Hilda Mae, they don't have any food we like to eat. So she went, got the cooks together and she said, we want some, some sauerkraut and some mashed potatoes and pork. Well, one cook didn't know what sauerkraut was, so she had to teach him. Hilda Mae's wake continues on Sunday. The funeral is Tuesday. There'll be a lot of final farewells then, but not for Donald Schaefer. He and Hilda Mae said their goodbyes on Friday. Perhaps the greatest honor a friend can have is to be there at the end. Donald Schaefer was there and then stood by gently as Hilda Mae went on her way. I said my final goodbye uh, when she died. Uh, it was uh, when she slipped off and uh, I said, well, old girl, uh, you're gone. And uh, uh, that was my, I guess that was a really final goodbye. Donald Schaefer told me no one can replace Hilda May or their relationship. I'm sure that's true, but he has the memory of a lifetime of being loved. We should all be so lucky, Ron. Boy, Dennis, that's so true. Very, very nice story tonight. Thank you, Dennis. Another viewing will be held tomorrow and Monday between 2 and 4 and 7 and 9 at the Ruck Funeral Home in Towson. Hilda Mae Snoop's funeral will be Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Bits and pieces of what took place after American Airlines Flight 1420 crashed are surfacing now. The flight data recorders have been found, and today the 911 call the was released. The river on fire. Alert 3. Alert 3 at number 1 Airport Road. It's going to be in the river on fire. American Airlines crews started dismantling the cracked shell of the plane today. Federal investigators are trying to find out why the jet couldn't slow down when it landed in that thunderstorm Tuesday night, sliding into a bank of lights, killing nine people. Once you see this video, you will agree that it's a miracle no one was killed. The earth gave way beneath a carport in the state of Washington, taking the 66 Ford Mustang with it. So far, there are five huge sinkholes on this street. Look at that. This one used to be a Japanese maple tree. A geologist says rain is causing groundwater to wash away, creating pockets of air, and if the area is hit with heavy rain, the street will have to be evacuated. 
Farmers are praying for rain as we enjoy another warm and bright day. Katie Lahan reports the drought is causing problems for animals and crops. I just don't have the quantity there. Soil dry as sand, a field pale in comparison to John Deere Green. Don Newcomer is making hay while the sun shines, but he'd rather have rain. I mean, we're just, it's a, really a lot further behind than it was last year this time. And it, it's going to be, it's going to be a uh, uh, catastrophe before the summer's over. But now the dry weather is causing even more problems. You've already seen the effects on your front yard, in your backyard garden, and in farmers' fields. But now livestock are starting to be affected, and that's a big problem. Not only with our horses, but with a lot of cows that we feed. Um, the hay's just not here this year because of the, uh, the weather. The, we haven't had any rain. Nutritionally, the quality is the same, but the quantity just isn't there. Don't you bite me. That means farmers like Don will have to pay more to feed their horses, and eventually those higher costs will be passed down to you. I'm going to water them right now. Don uses well water, so at this point he's not faced with any water restrictions. His animals have plenty to drink, but he's already prepared for the drought to continue. We haven't had that problem yet. But there is a possibility that that could happen. And if it does, I mean, we'll just have to set up pumps and pump water from the pond up here. Water's pretty precious. Until you're without it, you don't realize it, you know. Something all Maryland residents are starting to learn with each passing dry day. Katie Lahan, WJZ Eyewitness News. Don't forget, for continuing coverage of the drought and how it affects you, be sure to stay tuned to WJZ's first warning weather. On Monday and Tuesday, Eyewitness News will air a two-part series on the drought. There's no rain in sight and that's making things incredibly difficult for firefighters in New Mexico where hundreds are battling several big fires. The biggest is the 2200 acre Lajara fire. Tankers, choppers and ground crews now working around the clock trying to contain that blaze. This crew plans to fight the fire with fire by spending tomorrow lighting a backfire in hopes of starving the growing blaze. Let's check in with Dr. Bob, the man of the hour right now, to see what's in store for us. Well, Ron, given those circumstances you just detailed, I wish I could talk about rain coming in tomorrow, but that is not the case. We don't have any rain in the forecast for the next day or so. So we're looking for conditions that are going to be pretty much like what we saw today. Early tomorrow morning when you wake up, you'll be looking at mainly clear skies. There'll be a few high clouds around. Actually, it's going to be pleasantly cool. Early morning temperatures, say mid to upper 50s. We're going to warm up into the 80s. We'll come back with a full first warning forecast in just a few minutes, and we'll tell you when we have a chance of seeing some rain, and that'll show up in the five-day forecast coming up. Ron? We're all very anxious, that's for sure. Nature lovers have a brand new trail to explore, the new Winds Falls Trail. Open today in West Baltimore, it stretches from the western end of Franklin Town Road to Leon Day Park. Once the trail is finished, there will be 14 miles to hike and bike on. Still to come on WJZ's Eyewitness News, the Orioles take one into extra innings down at the yard. Chris has your highlights coming up in sports. And before you put that sunscreen on, you have to see tonight's Health Watch report. And the warm sounds of the velvet fog are silent. We'll be right back. You're watching Eyewitness News with Pat, Dr. Bob's weather, and Chris's sports. People who help make Eyewitness News Baltimore's favorite news team.